John, can I, can I slip one in? Because I see a thread going through here, and I want to make sure you have time to address this one. Okay. Oh, all these great questions. Oh, my gosh. I know. I, we I have so there's. We should do this again. I love it. I know. Let's questions. do it again because yeah. I still have a huge stack here, too, of people, <laughs> that people sent in from before. But okay. I want to make sure we address okay. this because I see a strong thread going through where some of the ladies are saying that they're feeling like that the women have to do like the harder work or the heavy lifting in a relationship. And that was actually one of the questions that was sent in as well. And I mean, from, from my perspective, you know, I've had the privilege of interviewing you many times and have read your book. And I feel like what you're giving us are kind of the keys to the kingdom because you're giving us tools and resources that we can use to get more of our needs met and to have more deeply satisfying relationships. But I'm seeing this thread going through here that um, is where the ladies are, some of the ladies are feeling like, wait, it's all on us. We have to be the ones that change, adapt, have our perfect behavior and so and so and so on. And we have to do the heavy lifting. I, I love what you're saying. I've encountered this for years. Why do I have to do the heavy lifting? Because you're the woman asking me what you can do to make your relationship better. When I talk to men, they have to do all the heavy lifting. It's what side do you want to look at this? If you want to be the agent of change in your life, this is how you do it. If he wants to be the agent of change, this is what he does. He doesn't have to be in front of me. Any man that asks me what the problem is, I'll tell him, boy, are you messing up? You're not doing the right thing. If you want to hear how men have to do the heavy lifting, you read the advice I give to men. It's what do you want in your life? You have the power. All I'm doing is telling what all I'm doing is telling you how you can get what you want. And if you heard that what we what we men have to do, just as a short thing. Men, you have to practice listening to her. You have to practice making her needs first. You have to practice not reacting and arguing with her. You have to practice, if you're angry, you can't talk to her about it. You cannot complain about anything. You have to suck it up. You have to become selfless. If there's a war, you have to give up your life. You're the one who has to do dirty, dangerous, and difficult. If there's an argument with a neighbor in lawsuit, you have to handle it. If there's a leak in the roof and a rainstorm, you have to climb on the roof and do it. And you can't complain about it. If there's dirty, smelly trash, you have to bring it out. If there's danger, you protect her. If she, and Oz, you have to give her four hugs a day. You have to empathize with her. These are things that, that nobody ever taught you to do. You have to do it. Men always say, you mean I have to do all that? I say, that stuff is easy. Once you know how to do it, are you kidding? Why would you complain about it? And what I'm saying to women, when you don't understand how you're creating the problems and making the messes in your life, it feels like a real burden and a heavy lift in order to change. And I get that. I get that because everything your mother taught you about how to have a relationship doesn't work today. Okay. Because you want to be different. You want to have a sex life. You want to be more independent. You want to be free to say who you want. You want to have conversations. You want to talk about how you feel and what you want. Women never did that in the past. I'm teaching you how you can do it. You have to change yourself if you want a different result. So yes, we're back to, you know, it's almost like, uh, you mean I have to work at this job to make money? Yes, you have to work. They're not going to give me a free ride. I thought the government's going to give me money for free. No, you know, you have to work for that. That's what life's about. But work is is wonderful if you know how to do it. That's the problem. And this is this all seems like, oh, I don't it's so much. It's only so much because you didn't know it before. And it's a pleasure to put it into action. See, that's the great thing. I mean. When, when I look at how to ask for more, okay, I have a 10 step process for asking for more. 10 steps before I ask my partner to do anything for me differently. Why would I need 10 steps? Because it's loving and it feels good to love. Like I would never just say you did something wrong. I first compliment first. I'd say, I wouldn't say we need to talk about that. I says, oh, you know, when you have time, when you're not watching TV, I want to talk about something. It won't, it doesn't take a long time, only a few minutes. You know, the other day you did this and this and this and you know, you don't do that all the time. And I really appreciate because you did this way one time and this way one time. And but it did push buttons inside of me. It triggered something inside of me. And I felt like, oh, what a crummy husband I've got or what a great wife, crummy wife I have. You know, you know, these are like stuff that was coming up. And it's really not even about you. It's about my own childhood stuff. It's like 
repressed stuff coming up and I'm being overreactive. And I'm really sorry about that, that I even had those thoughts and feelings because you're an amazing guy. And at the same time, if you, you know, try to remember to turn out the light, I'd really, really appreciate it. Just makes my life so much easier, but in the bigger picture, no big deal. Well, why did I have to do all of that? Because it felt good to do. But if you don't know how to do it, you think, oh, I have to coddle my partner. I have to be so delicate. Why can't I just tell him change? You know, <laughs> you know we, we have to get out of it. But, you know, people, people get angry when, when, when they're basically being told you're doing it all wrong. But if you're not getting the results in your life, you're doing it wrong. And, it, and certainly they're doing it wrong, too. But what use is it for me to talk about how bad men are? That's all you hear is, he doesn't do this. He does, what, what good is that? Doesn't do anything good. Unless, <laughs> in, in one case, it does. Unless you have really low self-esteem as a woman and you're one of these women, and they do exist, who stay with men who are very, very abusive. Because one of the things you have to do if a man is very abusive is you have to lovingly stop letting him abuse you, which means leave from the point of view, you've got a problem. If you fix the problem, the truth is I do love you if you do. And I would love to have a relationship with you, but I'm just enabling you if I stay with you. So I have to go take time to find my happiness, not depending on you. And I recognize my part of this. I am actually bringing out the worst of you by even having sex with you, because I don't want to have sex with you. And that's not, you know, your problem. That's my problem. I built up so much resentment inside and so much hurt inside. And it's not even all about you. It's about my childhood. It's about repeating patterns and my own feelings of helplessness. So, you know, it's not you and you have your problems for sure. But I know that if I was to stay with you, I continue to bring out the worst of you and, and you're responsible for your problems as well. But I don't want to add to them. So we need to part. Do you see how that like both people are responsible for the problem, but this takes away victims. What I know to be true is when I'm in love state, not, I've never been a victim. I had things happen that helped me learn and lessons and I'm growing because of it. My life is wonderful because of the lessons I've learned and it's not perfect. It just gets better and better. That's a love state. It's not a victim state. And what I know to be the case in psychology is whatever you, any pattern you have in your life where you feel victimized, it happens again and again and again. That pattern will not change until you get that you're creating it. And how are you creating? You have to find out. It could be you keep picking the wrong people. That's also a, a, a victim pattern. And because you're not willing, you have to look inside yourself that you're not open to the right people. You know, your expectations are too high. You're too picky. What, what could it be? Or, you know, I've talked a lot with you about this, about women. Often women are attracted to men who are not available. Why would you involve yourself with that? But if you're attracted to men who are not available, if you're attracted to men who are dangerous, if you're attracted to men who are married, uh, then what's going to, that's a problem inside of you that you would be attracted to someone who's not going to be able to give you the love you need. Your intuition is saying, I can't get what I need there, so I want it. Okay, that's your own problem inside that you pick these wrong guys. So what you have to do is recognize that if you're turned on to the wrong guys, then the right guys will not cause you to be turned on. So that's another thing. We practice having relationships with men that are more interested in you than you're interested in them and let them earn your interests by taking care of you and allowing you to use them. And when you can feel, wow, I can get this guy to do whatever I want, I'm, I'm uh, falling in love with him because he truly wants to be there for me. Instead of some guy that you have to convince, that's just bad news, that's low self-esteem, that's your issues, that's what you've got to work on in your life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is pure gold and it's really empowering to recognize the choice that we have in staying in victimhood, right? I mean, that alone could transform so many things in our lives when well, we recognize. It, it does. And it sounds sometimes harsh when I say it. I just want to soften it. But, you know, if a woman came to me and said, John, you're, you're, you know, you're, it just feels like I have to do everything. And I said, well, yeah, if you want to make a change, you have to make a change in yourself. At the same time, I hear you and it's hard. It's difficult being alone. It's difficult not getting support in your life. It's difficult not understanding. These are hard things. And we can talk about that. You need to be heard. So all these women that are feeling that burden, you need to talk about somebody. That's the part of you which is a victim. Victims need to be heard, okay? They need empathy. That's the female side of us. The female side of us goes into, I did not get. The male side of us goes into, I don't know how to do. 
So they just need strategies, but women need to be heard. So there, there needs to be a softness to counterbalance. You know, this is how you can get, but also the pain is inside and that's where emotional intelligence, healing the heart is very, very important. You need to have friends that you can talk to and share your feelings. But in the context of this is the part of me that feels like a victim and up here in your logical brain, your intuitive brain, and I'm not a victim, but I'm nurturing myself. Because, you know, if you have a little child and they're crying, you want to listen to that child and then they smile and run off and play. It's done. So right. we have this like child inside. It feels like I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it and afraid I can't do it. And so then you, you know, go into a feeling like, oh, this is too hard for me, as opposed to when you learn how to do it, it's, I won't say it's easy, but, in, but when you learn how to do it, it is easy. And that's called wisdom. When you have wisdom, it's not a big deal. Life is, you know, one of my friends, he wrote that book, uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. It is all small stuff. And you, you can argue with me and everything, but when it comes to how you feel, it's small stuff. You are in control of that. That, that outer world is bad news, but how you react to it, that's what you're in control of. And that feeling of a burden is just simply, I, this makes me feel wrong and I don't wanna look at that and I don't know how to do it else and I can't do it another way and he should make it easier for me. And I'll agree, I'll tell all men in the, to the end of the, my life, men, you need to make it easier for women. This is what we can do for them. And, and unfortunately, men used to do that by having a good job. Now we don't know what to do. You've actually made it really hard for us, not that I wanna paint men as victims, by being so independent. And now when you're independent, you have a whole new list of needs, romance, affection, understanding, compliments, empathy, <laughs> compassion, planning dates, helping out around the house, vacuuming, cleaning dishes, I mean, doing laundry, all these things that women are wanting us to do today. I never had to do that. I used to just go to my job. Now I gotta to go to my job and all that, why? Because you chose, as women, you wanna go out and be independent, so you need more from us. And I'm teaching men, you can give women more, you just have to know the strategies to do it so you don't feel burdened. Because men feel that burden too. Everybody's feeling burdened today only because they don't know how to do it. Once you know how to do something, like, you know, the computer, try changing softwares and <laughs> go from Apple to the other one and the other one. It's just kind of like, oh, I have to relearn all of that. It's a burden, you know, it's, it's tough. You got to read the manuals. You got to learn the whole stuff. But once you get a handle on it, uh, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this wisdom, I mean, you've given us so much wisdom and I think wisdom about relationships and having love and healing our hearts. I think some of the things you're talking about, not just today, but also in your Facebook lives and in some of your other work, which people can access on your website, marsvenus.com. I think it is so valuable for, for you to be offering so many tools and so many resources for us to obtain so much wisdom. And John, you're always so generous. I mean, you're just always so generous with what you share and so I just love connecting with you this way. And obviously my audience does too, because I think we have, I think we have like hundreds of questions now here pouring in. So maybe we can do it again another time. Um, because oh, I would just love to answer all these questions. These are so beautiful. I just I, one quick one, which is, you know, I'm a widow for two years. What do I do? Well, now I'm a widow of two years today. And what did I say? Date, don't wait. Please don't sit around being, you know, waiting, feeling alone. It, being alone is the enemy of femininity. Femininity is all about relationships, your friends, but also start dating again. But don't, don't think you're betraying your partner. And also don't feel like you can't be happy. This is a, a mind game that goes on. Our mind is, you know, we have a limited thinking unless we broaden it. If losing my wife caused such pain and loss and sadness, then if I no longer sad, that must mean I don't love her. Because the only reason I was so sad is because I love her so much. She's my life and she's not there. That makes me sad. So if I'm suddenly happy and in love and having a good time, that must mean that I didn't really love her. No, that means <laughs> it's just that sadness is this temporary experience we have while we're learning to let go but we don't never we don't stop loving them we stop expecting them to be there next to us in bed okay at home she's no longer going to be there in, in physical form so it doesn't mean i stop loving her 
And it doesn't mean I can't be happy again. But if we, we feel like we're betraying our spouse, if we're happy again, and that's not true. One, the simple thing is, of course, that if there's a heaven, they want us to be happy. But two, within our own self, we can love again and love again. And the way you can love again, if you're a woman, is you date not to find the right person, date to practice these new skills. That's the thing. It's all practice. It, you know what I learned as a, as a teacher when I was young, had a lot of anxiety and fear about all this, because you can see how people can take it the wrong way. And a friend told me, he said, you know, uh, comedians have to face tough audiences all the time. So don't worry about it. Why? Because every, every show you give, if you're a comedian, is just a rehearsal until you get on the Johnny Carson show, which would be like the Oprah show or something today. It's like, who cares? It's just a little audience. So basically, what we're doing in life is growing. Who cares? As long as you create someone safe and you're practicing these skills, don't be alone. Don't be alone. Uh, I like our phrase, date, don't wait. And statistically, women wait nine years if they get involved again. That's statistically. Wow. Men wait three years and they're already married. <laughs> and often women then feel like, what am I chopped meat? He just got married again. No, it's that women are more, men are more in touch with their need for women than women are in touch with their need for men. Because we have this thing called sex drive, which is highly, highly important. And having sex opens a man's heart. But for a woman, she has to open her heart before she can feel her need for sex, generally speaking. So sex is a big motivator, evolutionary motivator. And for women, love is a major, major motivator, but not necessarily the love of a man if you don't trust men or you can't trust yourself in relationship to men. Because see, that's the big thing for women is it's all about trusting. I picked this guy, I thought it was gonna be, and this is where divorce happens. I picked this guy, I thought he was the right guy. He wasn't, I can't trust myself. And the only way you can trust yourself is to listen to this talk I gave today and recognize, oh, you can trust yourself because now you realize you created a mess just like he created the mess you're responsible. And if you can learn what you did wrong, then you have confidence. Confidence and you can trust again that I can get in another relationship and it will be better. But don't jump into a serious relationship right away. Practice, practice, practice until you're on the Johnny Carson show. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. That's beautiful. So for the ladies that are listening here and are with us, I would love for you to put a little... Um, Thank you to John for his generosity and sharing today and maybe share one thing with us that you're taking away from the conversation today, something that really stands out. And uh, John, I know you're probably trying to kind of peek at those too, but um, I also want to give you a chance, John, to also, um, and go ahead and take a minute to do that, but I also want to give you a chance to tell us a little bit more about your work and some of the things that you're doing right now. Oh, I love your comments, everybody. I just want you to know it's beautiful. And uh, so some of the things that we have available, uh, MarsVenus.com, over 100 blogs that I've done, uh, video blogs, short video blogs on relationship. I've done uh, 32 different health blogs, uh, some supplements you can take in order to balance your hormones, uh, create libido, uh, better sleep, blood sugar balance, uh, releasing pain in the body, uh, a lot of easy things, you know, I just focus on the easy stuff, natural things you can do. And so I give you videos on that to be healthy. Uh, and the, the relationship skills are all there. My daughter, Lauren, she's 34. She does um, amazing blogs, probably about 50. I think she's got video blogs. Uh, join our mailing list. You get every week, you get a video of me as well. A video of Lauren. They come, they come and go. We've got an insiders club. We have access to 200 seminars that I've taught. Uh, you can pick and choose, but every week we give you one. Uh, we give you five to choose from, or you can use watch them all if you have time. Uh, you know, we know we're all busy, but it's nice to be able to dip in there and get a little uh, reassurance and answer questions, and they tend to be timely. Uh, then there's my Facebook, which I've got right now. The uh, It's called John Gray Mars Venus Facebook site. And there, if you go to the videos, you'll see there's a, a, a lot of videos. I just finished doing the six weeks of every day doing two hours, so or sometimes longer, on topics like um, how to meditate, difference between meditation for men versus women, um, 
uh, uh, communication skills, uh, dating, um, healing the heart, success principles, sex and dating, and romance. So those topics are all there. You can check that out. That's available. Uh, and I, I invite you to participate there as an insider. You get special deals and so forth. But also, if you just want the free stuff, it's all there. I want to make this available to as many people as possible. And I feel really honored to be on this show. We really, really appreciate you, John, and are so grateful for your generosity and wisdom. Once again, it's always just such a pleasure and a delight to be with you. And, and really, really, I'm honored. Thank you again. It's, it's mutual. And I, I'm just so impressed with the comments that everybody's made and grateful for them. Uh, <laughs> Particularly after reading some of the comments on uh, Facebook Live, <laughs> it's random people. You know, I'm, I'm used to different audiences. So this is my audience. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, this audience loves you for sure. That's, that's uh, definite. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And uh, John, again, once again, we thank you. And uh, we wish you all the very best um, and in life and in love. And uh, are so grateful for all you're contributing to the world. I mean, your work, your work, your body of work, it's just, to me, it's got to be unfathomable to think about how widespread your work has reached into the far corners of the earth and how much of a difference you've made for so many people out there. That's just an amazing, beautiful gift that you've brought to the world. Well, right now I'm working, on a, right now I'm working on a book, Men Are From Mars For Women Only. And these questions are, are, will be highlighted in that book. So this is very good for research for me as well. So I'm looking forward to a copy of it and, and the comments that women have made. So helpful for me and trying to address the needs that are most current at all age groups. Thank you so much. I will um, compile the questions that are here in the chat in the Q&A and also the questions that we didn't have a chance to get to today so that you have that because we'd be honored as a group to be part of your book research. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. I yeah, that. so I will email that to you, John. And thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining us. And we will be with you hopefully again. Bye-bye for now.